guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at Reeves Volkswagen in Tampa, Florida, because guess what? We have it. This is a 2020 Volkswagen Golf GTI. This particular one is the SE trim. But before we dive into this little hot hatch, let's talk a little bit about the Golf and the history of this iconic automobile. It's been around since 1974, if you could believe that. What's a fun little interesting fact is that the Volkswagen Beetle had already been around for almost 40 years by the time that this was introduced all the way back in 1974. Since then, it really has become the sweetheart of Volkswagen's lineup, especially now that the Beetle is no longer around and really gives a lot of versatility. But the great news is when you add those three letters, GTI, you're gonna be getting extra performance. And at a price point, that is still very, very affordable. Now, when you go the Golf GTI route, there's three different trims you could go, S, SE, or Autobahn. I've decided to go right for the sweet spot, SEL, because it's gonna give you some extra performance goodies and touches to the interior that you're not gonna find on that base S trim. At the end of the day, I think we are gonna discover why this vehicle has been chosen time and time again by car and driver to be part of their 10 best, which it just recently won for 2019, 10 best vehicles to be produced. Keep winning it over and over again. So let's go ahead, dive into this 2020 GTI. This one is the final year of the Mark 7 chassis. Right off the bat, love the styling. You know, the thing with a Golf, especially the GTI, is that it's like a Porsche 911. No matter what year the Porsche 911, you know it's a 911. Same thing with this car. Really great styling on the headlight design, even though we're at the end of this generation run. Love the blacked out treatment inside. And one of the touches that I think really signifies a GTI is that extra red trim. What they decided to do is instead of just having it on the grill, they brought it into the interior of the headlight housing. I think that's so smart, looks really, really great, especially with this metallic black, full LED headlights, LED daytime running lamps and turn singles. We drop down, you have some nice flat black horizontal pieces. So you have your two horizontal slots here and you have a horizontal flat black extension. Now, the good news is it doesn't look like a vent, even though some people might say, hey, are they trying to have a vent? Because what they did was is they actually house the LED fog lamps in this lower corner here. And obviously there's one on each corner Nice touch, glad that they actually put the fog lamps in there instead of just left it blank. Now, as we come across the front end of the Golf GTI, this is a unique front fascia. So remember, you have the Golf, you have the GTI, and you have the R. R is gonna be that pinnacle of performance. GTI is in that middle spot of the different um, production sets in the Golf family. But with the GTI, you're gonna get that nice red trim all the way across. See those letters? You know you're getting that extra performance. I love the way they notch the hood around the iconic Volkswagen logo. Remember, the people's car, Volkswagen, Farfenugan, driving pleasure, all these German words, I love it. Flat black on the lower grill, and then you get a little bit of a lower lip extension, just a little bit, but it's nice because you got some black that's the actual metallic black of the car and some flat black. Behind here is gonna be a large intercooler for that two liter turbocharged engine. Now, when we get up onto the hood, simple, clean lines. Look at how they take the lines from the headlight housing, bring it into the hood, and it's gonna go straight back towards the A pillar. Now, the great news is, obviously, since this is the end of this generation, is that you're gonna get something where all the bugs have been worked out, plus pricing. That's gonna be a big, hot topic on this Mark 7. Now, when we get to wheel and tire setup, what are we looking at on the GTI? You have this machine aluminum wheel with the gloss black, looks super clean. And this is something that, you know, Volkswagen has been using for uh, many years now, 18 inch wheel. I am gonna zonk it because it's a little bland, even though it's kind of associated with the Golf GTI, just a little bland for my taste. I'm hoping for Mark 8, they bring some extra style to the wheel, but 18 inch wheel, like the nice bright red calipers. Now here's a little interesting fun fact. For 2019, even though it's a 2020, for 2019, they brought some extra things. There's actually more performance underneath the hood and you actually have the brake setup from the Golf R. So very nice to have 
not only red calipers, because we all love the look of red calipers, but you are actually getting extra braking performance from a 2019 and a 2020 GTI. But super clean on the wheel design, nice overall look. Now, when we go into the fender treatment, the lines are so clean. They give you a nice simple badge, nothing that looks too gaudy, nothing that looks like it's trying to be a fake vent. The red trim, when you see the red, you know it's a GTI. I love touches like that. Overall proportions, they really have not changed very much over the years, and that's why I say it's like a 911. You see a Golf GTI from 20 miles away covering one eye, you know it's a Golf, and I love that. Color match on the mirror caps, turn singles built in, love at the bottom, that nice side sill extension, flat black to match what's going on up front. Of course, you're gonna get color match uh, door handles, and on the SE trim, you have a nice size sunroof, which is great. Now, as we keep working our way back, the way it kind of just comes to a nice stubby end, really great on the proportions. We get to the back. I think Volkswagen, one of the smart things is that they hide everything behind this iconic logo. So there's no actual handle, buttons, or anything like that. It's all built right underneath here. You just lift up the the actual emblem, and that is your latch. But as we drop down, you're gonna get full LED taillights, GTI badging, see how clean it is? That's one of my things that I think aesthetically just draws me to the back of a GTI. And then of course, you're gonna have the dual exhaust, one chrome tip on each side, nice style diffuser. They could have done without this, this fake vent design. So I am gonna zonk this lower portion, but the rear diffuser, very aggressive, but yet very clean all at the same time, even that Roof spoiler, that roof spoiler coming out the back, nothing too crazy, but it's gonna give you some extra downforce and airflow to channel the air around this GTI. But let's go ahead, pop the hood and see what's powering this 2020 GTI. All right, guys, Mark 7, the last of this generation, 2020. Underneath that hood, you do have a large hydraulic hood strut to hold the hood open. You have that two liter, that's a two liter inline four turbocharged engine for 2019 and 2020. 228 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque. You get to have your cake and eat it too with this, this hot hatch. You either could go six-speed manual or you could go with the seven-speed DSG. Now, when I say DSG, don't think that that's anything super crazy or anything. It's a DCT transmission. That is Volkswagen's way of saying DCT transmission. The great news is for 2020, it's gonna continue as a seven-speed. You have launch control. The weight of this car with the DCT is 3,128 pounds. Obviously, if you go with the six-speed manual, it's gonna be a little bit lighter. And one of the main reasons why I think you should go SEL is because of Volkswagen's dynamic chassis control. So you have adaptive dampers, all four corners, that you could adjust the stiffness of the suspension. Zero to 60 in about 5.6 seconds, quarter mile in 14.1, and guess what? Great MPG return. 24 in the city, 32 on the highway. That really has been the premise of this hot hatch is that it can bring you for a reasonable price, some decent MPG return and performance. But why don't we go ahead, let's fire up this inline four and see what it sounds like. All right, guys, we're inside the 2020 Golf GTI SE trim. I know you're saying, well, Joe, you're talking about this being a hot hatch. You're talking about this really being big bang for the buck. How much is it? MSRP, and remember, this MSRP is around $34,000, but I'm telling you right now, definitely give Zadie a call because Reeves really wants to move these before the Mark 8s come, and that kind of makes sense. So you could take advantage of a situation here. Let's see what you get for the money to the door panels. I'm so glad they didn't go with gloss black. There's this nice flat black textured design, looks really clean. The bright silver really fits nicely. You have that cleanliness to a door panel, that German cleanliness with the lines. The red stitching is great. Armrest, fairly soft. And you have a light, nice large pocket down there. You could easily get probably four Subway subs, maybe some cold cut combos a meatball sub, put them down in there, and some root beer to wash it all down. Soft material, really digging the flat black texture material here with that silver trim. We get to the infotainment side of things. This is where 
SE trim and higher is the way to go. You get an eight inch infotainment system screen. So you could go into your menu, you got your Apple CarPlay, your Android Auto. We could go into vehicle settings, real nice to toggle through, super, super clean. Think that it, I think that it is so smart to go with this trim because you're gonna get the extra features that you come to expect from this vehicle. You could go into your different settings and everything, which is really great. We go back to menu. You drop down, there is a bit of gloss black, and I am gonna zonk that. I wish they would have stayed with the other material. And these knobs, they just feel a little bit on the cheap side. I wish that they wouldn't rattle like this and they're really plasticky feeling, but you do have heated seats. You got simple AC controls, no dual climate. It would have been nice to have dual climate controls in this particular vehicle. I do like the silver trim. This is that seven speed DSG, also known as a DCT transmission. I'll throw it in a reverse. There's your backup camera, no trajectory. So that's gonna be another zonk. I wish that they would have put trajectory on that backup camera. Open up door number one, you got a USB, and you can fill this up with a bunch of German peanuts. Just totally no shell, fill that up, close it up. A little bit of dead buttons here, but you know what? Here's my favorite part. Remember I was telling you about going SE because you're gonna get special um, abilities. Here's where you have the ability to change things up. You have your eco mode, you have your normal mode and your sport mode. That's going to change the suspension damping. All four corners allow you to have a little bit better throttle response. There are quite a bit of dead buttons in here, which I am going to zonk, but I do like the way they use the red stitching. Nice boot here. Obviously you could shift with the shifter or there's going to be paddles on the back of the steering wheel, which I'll show you that when you get to the business end. You do have a 12 volt, two cup holders. Here's your GTI key fob. It's the older style. It's a little bit on the thicker side, but I do like the way at the bottom here, it says GTI. You flip it around, you got all the buttons, your panic button, all that good stuff. Good old fashioned e-brake with the nice shift uh, e-brake boot here. Armrest is on the softer side with the stitching. Open that up and you could easily probably pour about 16 ounces of soda in there. So if you don't have a, a place to you know say somebody's got a two liter bottle and you don't want to take the whole two liter bottle you could pour it right in there and then just get a straw and drink it right out so that's nice seats in the se trim you get full leather love the red stitching nice soft material really really well done on the quality manual controls for both the passenger and the driver although you do get though here's the weirdest thing so it's manual controls except for this part watch can you guess what part yes the back is electric. I'll never figure that out. Why not just have the whole thing manual or at least on the driver's side, give me my electric. You do have a nice size sunroof, which is great. And then simple on the mirror, no auto dimming or anything like that. But why don't you come over the business end? I want to show you behind the wheel of this 2020 GTI. All right, guys, one of the things I want to point out is you have this nice aluminum sill panel. You can't see it now, but you see this thin red stripe that actually lights up at night. You can see that really clearly pedal arrangement is perfect you have a super large dead pedal love the brushed aluminum trim brake and throttle obviously there's no third pedal which you can still get this with a six speed here is really the magic for me i love the steering wheel flat bottom nice gti badge very tasteful on the horn button flat black on the buttons so you're not gonna have to worry about fingerprints the zonk though are these paddles they're small and they're made out of plastic something a little bit larger even if they were made out of plastic something just a little bit larger i think would go a long way especially if you're going to do an autocross or a track day because these cars can do it and you could have a blast i promise you that gauges you got a little bit of gloss black around them but i like the nice large analog tack speedometer fuel gauge and coolant gauge and then you have that small little uh digital display in the center that you could actually toggle through a plethora of information which is really nice but overall the great news is tons of room remember i'm six feet tall even with this sunroof tons of room in here let's get to the back seat and see how your passengers are going to enjoy riding in this gti all right guys back seat time here's another area where the golf just wins hands down whether it's a gti or not plenty of headroom seats are comfy i got plenty of leg room here leather goes all the way around the back you have a place for a frisbee maybe a mirror or an abacus and then you have your two ac vents no connectivity though I wish they at least give you a 12 volt, maybe two cans and a string, maybe a notepad and a, and a pen to write some notes to yourself because there's no way if your phone dies, 
no way to charge it back here. I get a pocket too, which is nice. The bigger news is you get a nice armrest. And I'm not zonking the cup holder location because look, they give you pr plenty of elbow real estate for this back portion, which is really great. Plus, you have the ability to have the pass-through. So have your cooler in there with your Pringles, with your Dr. Pepper, and you can have a freaking party back here. But put that back. Speaking of party, let's go check that cargo area and see how many Pringles we could fit back there. All right, guys, time to get into that cargo area. Like I showed you earlier, real simple. You just lift, it's nice and light. We have the Volkswagen gear in here to show you what does it look like when you have stuff back here. But if you're wondering, well, Joe, what's the size? 22.8 cubic feet of space with the seats up. You fold the seats down, 52.7 cubic feet of space. Watch this, watch how easy it is. You're just gonna hit the switch and then you're gonna flip. Nice, simple, doesn't need to be complicated. Boom, look at that. That's almost 53 cubic feet of space. Pringles, Twinkies, Ho-Hos, Ding Dongs. You could even go, think about it, you go to Costco and get the world's largest bottle of mayonnaise and put it back here. But if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go find some twisties so we can see how this GTI handles. All right, guys, we're in the 2020 GTI. Right away, the things that I love about this car is visibility is so nicely done out the windshield, out the back. Going the SE trim, I think is well worth it, having the leather interior. Bolstering is good. One of my zonks is I wish they had lower lumbar support. There's no lower lumbar support, which kind of blows my mind. Or not many adjustments that you could make to the seat, um, especially with having just that silly electric portion just for the back. The great news is though, gauges are easy to read, even at a quick glance, steering wheel is spot on the money, and the way that they do their infotainment system, really, really clean. A bit of gloss black, but the good news is, is guess what, as we're driving here, you, there's no reflection, which is nice, no glare. Now, there's dust, but just get yourself a little, you know, a little cloth, a little Volkswagen GTI cloth, and you could polish that off. I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised with how the Golf GTI rides. Uh, you know, obviously having that dynamic suspension control allows you to really um, change it up depending on what your driving situation is or what the road condition is. And, and I think that just offers more flexibility. Just like with the DSG, you could go six speed, but guess what? You are going to be changing it up yourself. With this particular setup, the DSG, you have that ability to either shift manually or you can then shift and let the automatic do the job for you. All right, guys, time to see how this Golf GTI performs. I put in manual shift mode by taking the shifter, putting it over to the right on throttle. Here we go. Gonna get a bit of wheel spin. This is front wheel drive. Very fast shifts on the brakes. Let's see how she likes to dance here. Nice, look at that, good feedback. Downshift, on throttle. Super smooth, I'm quite surprised how much body roll there is. A lot of body roll there, but you know what? Front wheel drive, you are gonna have that limit in traction, and this is riding on all season radials. So it would be interesting to really kind of up the ante and have this car be on some stickier tires because I think that's what it really, really needs is just a set of maybe maybe some Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's or Super Sports or something because there was just a lot of tire slippage, especially at the extreme lean angle and a lot of body movement, which surprised me a lot. All right, guys, I want to take us out onto the highway. We're in second gear on throttle. I really do like the sound inside the cabin. And I'm telling you, the shifts are very, very quick. Now, getting out on the highway, we're gonna see how the road noise is not too shabby. I mean, it's going over the expansion joints very nicely. Visibility is super, super clean in here. I mean, the way that the A-pillars are pulled very far apart allows you to see everything. And there's really not a ton of blind spots, to be honest with you, which is a good thing. 
But here we are doing about 60 miles an hour and besides the, the, the clickety clatter of the expansion joints, it actually rides very, very nicely. The inside, the height of the armrests and whatnot are pretty good. The door armrests I actually like better than the center armrests. I don't know what it is with the center armrests, just like in the WRX, it's very, it's on the lower side. Not as low as the WRX, but still on the lower side. Good weight from the steering as well. So it's, it's nice to have that great feedback, not only as you're going through the twisty bits, but also traveling down the highway as well. I'm just, the, the bottom portion of the seat sucks. I wish there was some type of lower lumbar or some type of adjustment. It just, on a longer drive, I don't know how comfortable I'm gonna be in this seat. But definitely having the Apple CarPlay, the Android Auto, and um, you know, the, the, the room in here is what really makes this such a winner. All right guys, I wanna do another acceleration test. I'm gonna put it in first gear. We're gonna roll this time, see how the traction is. On throttle, much better obviously getting the traction to the ground. I, I think the thing you're gonna love is just how fast this DCT transmission uh, shifts in this Volkswagen Golf GTI. Uh, you know, if you were to go to the WRX route and you didn't want to drive manual, you'd be dealing with a CVT. So uh, I could see why somebody would go the GTI route with that avail availability to go with the seven speed DCT transmission. But overall, you know, it's a, it's a great versatile car that will do a little bit of everything. And I can understand why it's won so many awards. I'm very curious what the Mark 8 is gonna bring to the table and if there's a way to get some stickier rubber from the factory would be nice. But uh, hopefully this gave you a nice overall feel of what this car is all about. We're gonna get back to Reese Volkswagen and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. All right guys, it's been another great day here at Reese Volkswagen. This is why these cars are so popular. For the money, having this type of performance and the versatility, this really makes it the perfect daily driving hatchback that you're gonna find on the market. And plus, having that extra horsepower that they brought in from 2019 and into 2020, and this being the end of the Mark 7, I don't know, I think it's a win-win situation. But if it's vehicles like these that you wanna keep seeing on the channel, leave a comment in that comment section. Of course, I wanna thank Zadie and everybody here at Reese Volkswagen for allowing us access to this last of the Mark 7. If you are a subscriber, Thank you for being part of the Razor Rise family. If you're new to the channel, you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you wanna help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, click the link in the description, get yourself some Razor Rise merch, gotta give it to Big Liz McGee. He's actually holding the camera with one finger. So thank you, Tom, please don't drop the camera. And just like always guys, I'll see you on the next ride.